Hello, hello everyone. Master Xeon 101 here. And in this video, I figured we could talk about the modeling process of a character named Helper. So I'm a big fan of the Venture Bros, and I figured that something as obscure as this would not hurt. You know, typically I stay away from IP related work. However, I do love Helper. So I'm just going to drag over a couple of images that we'll be referencing. I've just been looking at images, just trying to ascertain exactly how his jaw area is constructed and how his neck is connected. But really, there's not a lot of images that explain it. So, you know, as I go through these images, it's just more and more of a puzzle as to how this guy actually is assembled. But this image does show him from the back, which does tell us that his jaw is a apparatus that attaches to a cylinder and isn't a cutout of a cylinder, which is an inaccuracy from a previous attempt. And from all appearances and guesses, all I can surmise is that this is truly sticking out of his neck and going into his chest. So without further ado, let's uh, go ahead and begin. We spent a minute talking about reference images and you know me and references, they are a suggestion. So just starting off with a 32 round cylinder, almost was gonna change it, but you know, why not just take this SZ2, uh, accidentally tapping two twice, not sure what's going on there. And let's take a look at the shape of the head. All I see is an inset, an extrusion, an inset, and an extrusion. Let's press G, Z, and bring this down after growing our selection a couple of times. And for this, we can apply the scale. And let's press Control B and press P to set our profile to 1. Go ahead and start soloing our bevel early. And now we can basically grab every edge. And when we Control B, we're reinforcing it for subdivision. Just really getting into the swing of things very quickly. After a whole month of being all about subdivision, we have no time to waste. So the first thing to address is probably the eyes. So I'm just going to add in a loop, press control B to bevel that loop. And let's just add them precisely right here. So main thing is I never want to see subdivision in edit mode. I don't know how many times I got to say that in a video, but just kidding. I just say it for the kicks now. So let's just turn our selection into a circle and take a look at it from top view and we see that you know while we got a circle shape we also broke the profile of the circle which means that we are going to have things popping out I'm pretty sure there's an option in loop tools I could have checked to avoid this but it is life to basically get in and do corrections on things so let us grab these faces press I in order to inset and then we could press E to extrude S, Y, zero in order to flatten it. And we see that from the view that we're looking at, which is front, that they aren't very round. So we're gonna make a series of mistakes and then attempt to correct it. So I'm just gonna press S and X and get this back to being a more circular formation. And we're gonna try to grab the original pieces that we're damaging and just slide those out of the way while we look at this from top view and attempt to get things to go back to being conformal. So we could have, of course, shrink wrapped or split off a piece of the mesh and reprojected all sorts of things. But as you see, I'm just so heavy handed now that I just get in and just make geometric modifications just based on, based on what I see. So let's go ahead and pull this back, continue looking at it from top view I don't know what's going on with my hands today. A little shaky. Been uh, doing a little too much sub D modeling. Just kidding. Might need some coffee though. Let's press G Y. Grab this one. G Y. We're only just moving things on the Y. Just keeping things ever so subtle. So it looks like our gambit is going to pay off, which isn't the best way to work, but you know, uh, we're just getting in here and just modeling this using subdivision geometry. So for me, I, I look at subdivision more as a discipline than any specific <clears throat> pro or con, you know, more like, um, you know, in this context, we're looking at it more like a challenge. You know, the challenge is to use quad or uh, use subdivision all month 
in place of where we would normally use bevel. So different rules apply, which has caused this event to unfold the way it has. But we could easily be doing things with bevel and having much shorter discussions because bevel as an auditor is a lot more lenient. And you can just see any of my previous videos to just see how we can just gain bevel to give us exactly the results that we want. And then we just go for the exact roundness that we want off the bat. And it's just so kind to us. But subdivision, on the other hand, requires a little bit of accountability. There's still some rules, but we're going to get in and break them anyways. Alt X. We are going to hit it with a bisect mod, which looks like that until we put our modifier up above. So now we have something like this going on. So continuing on, you know, we'll probably be adjusting the size of the head all throughout this project. But based on the image that we were looking at previously that showed this from the back, we know that this front piece is an attachment. So what I'm going to do is shift click smart apply, which will give me a clone. But in this case, normally smart apply clone is nice to subdivision or nice to bevel. But with subdivision, it's a different story. If we smart apply clone now, we see that we're not having that same issue. And let's just get in and cut all the way to the front using knife. We could also be using box cutter and end gun and knife, but that's also a lot to talk about. So I'm going to say that this terminates a little past the midway point. So maybe one loop past it. We'll be generous today. And let's go ahead and delete that loop. And this is what we're looking at so far. So I'm going to select these two points. And because I have snapping pies, we can just do origin to selected. And just trying some things out. Let's just try giving it a solidification. If you're familiar with the show, this guy only says, you know, meet, meet, meet. Uh, other than that, you know, he's a just a side character, but uh, definitely a classic. So now we have something like that going on, which will work. Uh, we do see that there's also a hole in the side. And also, let's not go with creasing. You know, everyone's telling me that I should just be using creasing, but I don't even want to start a rant on it and end up with a discussion happening. You know, my goal isn't to talk anyone out of any particular workflow or discipline, but you know, I have my reasons for approaching sub D with such a um, archaic approach. It's because I'm just, I'm just old. Um, I mean, in, in 3D terms, modeling terms, like my workflows are just, I don't know, I feel they're outdated. However, they work for me. And, you know, most concept people or people at the top of their game, I mean, even our own Lord Vitaly, you know, continues to use his favorite program of all time, the discontinued XSI, because he is just too good at it to let it go. You know, if Blender was discontinued, I would hang on to that last version forever. I would be a weirdo. Like, if Blender just ended... I would be that guy who would never move on to whatever they named the next program. I would just keep using the program called Blender without relenting. It would just take me forever. It took me forever to actually become a 2.5 user when 2.49 was still a thing. And with 2.8, I, I, you know, because I realized how stupid that was in retrospect, I just jumped straight onto 2.8 whenever they made it a thing because it, it, I'm not going to fall for, make that same mistake again. I, I held out and 2.49, you know, stick a fork in it. It's done. You know, not, not going to trash talk 4.9. It's a great program. We, we open it all the time. Um, us and on the team just to do a challenge of if we could still use 2.79 because 2.79 is just, it's so classic. Wait, not 2.79, 2.49 is just so classic. You know, you get in there and you start landing those buffered shadows, man. And start, and you press shift P and you ask yourself, what happened to shift P, man? Shift P 
man, that thing, I could I think it actually showed the compositor too. Like it would render and do a compositor in the viewport and just like show you a little tidbit in your viewport. I mean, let's just delete this face. This is an interior face. We should be smart. Let's also not use auto smooth. Auto smooth is kind of a hard surfacey thing, but you know, we could still rock it. I just am not. And let's just pull this in. And, and the goal is to make first the uh, version that's kind of true to the show. This piece is also separate, so we might as well just save ourselves the pain. You know, making everything all manifold and together just isn't going to help for us. So let's just fill this in, bring this over to the other side, and we're just throwing some loops in just helping ourselves out sometimes you can't grid fill so you gotta fill manually not the end of the world F let's press I and press B so that way we're insetting respecting the boundary and let's just delete that and one day I would like to see like a partial bridge fill like blenders bridge fill is so or grid fill is just so great I do see a future where it solves a lot more and doesn't fell on odds, but you know, I over obsess. So with this piece, let's go ahead and start making some decisions. Like for example, I'm gonna apply solidify, which means that we are gonna to need to grab this area, bring it all into the center and dissolve the faces. And in order to maintain the integrity of our shape, we're gonna to need to put some loops on it. And to maintain this area, we could add a loop and press E to make it even. You know, yeah. You know, learning the hotkey of E, where I could have just read it at the top of the screen. Yeah, you know, that's the thing about Blender. The information is just so dang little. It's just like I ain't gonna read this, man. I can barely see straight. You need me to read these little words. Why are you giving me vision test Blender? But. You know, just like that, we have at least got in and started with the head. So let's just call this Papo Study Helper. And I promise I haven't done this before. Okay, it actually called it 01, meaning I've done it before. And we got Apple in the studio. She's under the desk right now because Ashley got a haircut. Um, the cat is just hiding. It's rather weird. So, you know, for the neck, let's deal with just a curve. And also there's no cutter. So we're just, we can willy nilly move things. We don't care. We can just move stuff, you know. And, and also with cutters, we have auto parenting. So it's not, it's a non-issue eat as well. But, you know, just depending. And with this bottom, let's also fill this in. So inset still using the same B settings as before. And we're just going to fill it in. One loop, two loop, and what were we talking about, you know? So let's just shift A, add a curve, and we'll just use a Bezier curve. I have all these extra curve options because I have curve tools enabled, but I'm a big fan of just using curves and curving things around things. You know, I get a lot of beginner questions where people are struggling with curving things and I'm like, you know, it's pretty straightforward. You make sure your origins are in order. You make sure your curve is in the right direction and it's going to curve. You know, that's why I think they don't view any issues that happen with it as bugs because at the end of the day, you intend to curve it, it will curve. So let's add a cylinder and looking at these black lines, I could tell that there's really intricate detail with the connections that is happening. Just kidding. There's not. So let's just uh let's be random and what i mean by random is let's select this let's just alt click e a macro to just push this area in let's use mesh machine to bring that area down and then we can just kind of give all of this reinforcement with bevel which you know by now i've just given up on trying to keep my bevel pure so that's why you know you don't see me going into select tool using the bevel because in order to keep things very vanilla, we're just showing how you do it with blender. And if you're just using vanilla blender, I don't care if you sully your bevel, just know that you should go in and unsully your bevel when you want it to be proper. But other than that, your bevel's sully, bro, you know, sorry to tell you, but 
when you set your profile to one and then you try to create a um, nice arc on something, it's just not gonna work out. Also, I don't know why I was trying to fill it on the top. Let's press array and we wanna press X to change the axis to Z and we can press one to just set it to one. And we're just gonna roll the wheel. So now we have a few sections. He has one, two, three, four. Let's look at this picture. He has one, two, three, four, five. You know what, I'm gonna trust this one because it's straighter. Let's look at this picture. One, two, three, four. Let's bring in another picture of this guy. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. You know, I was actually, why am I counting an array? That's when you are insane. When you're counting things that the modifier will tell you, don't do that, all right? So we're just gonna scale this down. And this is a good opportunity to talk about Blender's uh, Control-P because Control-P will parent things, but because I selected the object then the curve, I could press Control-P and use Curve to Form. And now this object is using Curve to Form as a modifier that's been added. However, whenever you add Curve to Form, this is all it shows. And that part has always driven me nuts. So as a result, in the Hops menu, if you press Q with this sort of context set up, you have an option for Curve Modifier, but you also, in the F9, are able to choose what axis you're dealing with. So sometimes you want to intimately deal with the axis on the instantiation, like you're seeing here. I mean, and that's all that Curve Modifier does. There doesn't need to be a master thesis or you know, hour long video about it. Um, it is really that basic. All the tools are literally that basic. They're like to solve a problem. A problem that, you know, I faced one million times and I was like, I face it a million and one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bevel myself. Just kidding, but let us see what's going on. So our object's a little bit off center. So let's press Alt G. And let's try just positive X and we see that we're back in the center. Let's move it down on the Z. And now it's actually centered on the screen. So, you know, we can't be letting it get the best of us like that. So now we're onto the body. So let's just save our file and take a look at helpers uh, kind of dead face. We also want to put some loops to reinforce this area in case there's any geometric distortion happening. We don't want that to overlap into unaffected areas. So sometimes you'll see me just place loops and it's merely for the purposes of just keeping my tension in check. In fact, we could always come back and grab this loop, slide it in, give this loop reinforcement. Also never look at your mesh with subdivision showing in edit mode unless you specifically need it. But you know, a little bit of loop reinforcement and we have something more interesting happening with the eyes that'll pick up a little bit more with the specular. So, I mean, that's just something I've always done with meshes. I've always just kind of gone a little extra with loops just to ensure that everything's not just looking like this. I mean, you know, typical subdivision loop reinforcement's good and all. Anyways, let's continue on with our work. So I'm gonna shift A and we're just gonna add a cube and SX and we're just gonna scale this up and begin making the body. So this object needs subdivision at the very end of the stack. And also we want to merge on array. So that way everything is joined together and there's not a subdivision issue causing shortness between these unions. But also if we get down to the nitty gritty, this loop and this loop no longer need to exist. You know, it's pretty well enforced and we don't need all that extra reinforcement. In fact, we probably don't even need to loop down the middle, but let's continue on with making our body. So for this, I just see a curve, you know, let's uh, get the image back that shows us the front and the back. And I just see a big curvy bean shape. So my first thought is to place a loop in the middle, press control B, and this is where having your bevel solely come back, comes back to haunt you because normally I bevel an edge and I expect it to smooth out, but this is not smoothing. And that's because our profile set to one, we could press P and set it back to 0.5, which I find to be an annoying process because getting it back to 0.5 is like a science. So I just click and eventually just set this to 0.5 and then I'll go back and undo 
and we'll set ourselves up again. So really, we don't need a lot of loopage happening. In fact, we could keep it relatively simple and just let subdivision help us, which is another thought. Sometimes I, I just opt for brute force because of so many negative experiences with subdivision that I'm just aware that like every time it ever got tough or annoying, I managed to survive the ordeal just by brute forcing subdivision, just being very heavy with the geometry. In fact, it's a meme now that, you know, how do you make this shape? Well, the answer is more geometry. Um, I linked a poly count thread a couple of videos ago where there's just this massive thread about how to literally model everything ever made. The greatest thread I've ever seen. Uh, I've always been just following it and scrolling through it periodically from time to time just to um, further understand the solutions that are being discussed. And, you know, right now I'm just moving this thing around and just thinking about it. And let's go ahead and bring in the next piece, which the next piece is kind of a flattened cylinder. It makes sense having this image to help us. And as we work through it, we will be able to make changes to get it to be more accommodating to the images. But if we look at this, they kind of connect together, even though on this side, it is rounded so just thinking about how we want subdivision to be controlled I would go and sharp mark these of course keep in mind I just select faces and because under select I have select boundary loops set to the hotkey of shift tilde I just press it and I could just select boundary loops because we don't want to mark this edge in the middle that's sloppy so if we put subdivision on it we start rounding it out and let's just slide it in We'll mirror it to the other side. And I would say that that is a close approximation of the shape. However, we could Alt X and put a bisect mod on it and just move it up front. And then we can actually move it freely and it mirrors over to the other side and we can really try to get these proportions more acutely. But we see that pulling it out too far gives us a very different latent type of helper bot. So we definitely don't want to cause that. And just looking at this, I just think like a remesher, and I'm like, man, there's so much geometry showing. Let's make it show less geometry, even though it's uh, unimportant. So for both of these pieces, we're going to need to move them about here, and that will feel a little bit more natural to me. Also, for this side section, if we give it more subdivisions, that isn't a perfect cylinder. So I'm going to actually Alt W, Start Box Cutter, and in Circle, we're just going to bring up a 32 rounder, a 32 pounder, um, and just bring it out with a mate. And there we go. We, we quickly have created our cylinder, except the origin is on the wrong side. So after flipping that, we can just mirror this across the other object, press Alt X to bring up mirror, then X to reset. And we'll just mirror this to the other side. And because of the um, process that we're using today, you know, we're able to be a little bit more flowing in this video and not get derailed into nonsense, even though I'm sure people are tuning in just for MX's nonsense. So let's bring this down and press Control Shift Tab to set ourselves to vertices. And of course, with this, we also want to use Bisect Mod by Alt Scrolling and really split this down the middle so we can intimately deal with this. So this piece on the side obviously needs to come out. This one needs to come in. And I'm just thinking off the top of my head what I want to do with this. Yeah, you know, I didn't jump to the body in the demonstration. I literally did the head and was like, it'll be an easy time. We'll make this, we'll make this thing with a subdivision uh, system and users will be happy. And then I'll go to the, um, bar and have myself a pint. Just kidding. Uh, I was referencing Shaun of the Dead. Uh, I'm not even a drinker. But we got all these bottles of alcohol with dust on them. I'm like, can't be, can't be getting drunk. Be weak. Wake up with a hangover. Hangover be the Rona. Can't risk it. So something like that. And, you know, really just thinking about how we want this to smooth out. Let's go ahead and put subdivision on it. And now we're dealing with the second level of this. So, you know me, sculpt mode, 
grab brush. No need for a Wacom. I don't have to pull out a Wacom for one of these situations. You know, this situation doesn't require my supervisor, Lord Intuos the second to pop up. But, you know, when I pull out the Wacom, things are getting serious. But we're not even going into dynamic topology and the geometry we're actually moving is rather simple. Let's toggle off edit mode visibility. Always toggle that off. And I'll always toggle it off, but it's not such a big deal that it needs to be automated and we need to change weight of subdivisions added. It's just a meme. You know, just, just having some fun here. Not everything requires a systematic change. So looking at the image, I see that we could be a little bit more spot on. Maybe by pulling this down. And we'll probably need a loop kind of circumnavigating the form like so. And I'm going to make this a quad. And it's beginning to get a little extra, but we can get this back under control. And it's looking pretty good. However, I do feel that this part needs to come in a bit. So let's go to object mode, grab this piece. And these are definitely bigger cylinders. In fact, what I see is this thing is almost that size and it goes almost down to the entire chest. So let's just scale this up to be more accommodating. Wow, we're having to scale it big due to the amounts of subdivision shrinkage that's occurring. So let's just bring this down and we can just deal with this as we see fit. And I don't need wireframe displaying for object mode. That's just a formality, but we're well aware of what our topology is looking like. And let's just bring this out. See how our relationships are looking with this other surface that isn't defined yet. So something like that. And Apple's under my desk, which makes me keep kicking her. Poor girl. So this point is important and thus will need to come out. Same with this one. All right, and let us get rid of the marking, but we will actually, we want to keep the marking because we're going to need to apply one more level of subdivision. So let's go ahead and turn all of this into quads just to make our lives just a little bit easier. And let's go ahead and do that level of subdivision apply. So first I'll apply the mirror, then the subdivision, and we'll re-bisect mod split it. And we see that, you know, just that one level of apply didn't do that much damage to it. And we now have enough geometry to begin working in this neck area. So because of the rules of subdivision, you know, we got to think a little bit differently. We got to think topologically. So it's a different type of game to me, you know, to you guys, it's the game of can you make it through this eternal video, but let's put subdivision on it and we see that we immediately lost this detail that we added because subdivision just doesn't play around whenever it comes to sparse geometry. Let's press P, set our profile back to one and we're going to do the same thing to this side. Turn off subdivision for edit mode. We got no time for that. And from here, we're just going to bevel this area, giving it a reinforcement. And we'll also give this area reinforcement. And our geometry is probably still not dense enough for us for it to support all the moves that we're making. We're making a lot of big brain moves. And you know, hopefully we are not writing a check that our topology can't cash. So you know, it's getting a little hot in here. Let me um, readjust. All right, let's get in here and see if we can finish writing these hot checks and if our topology will cache us out nicely when we exit edit mode. 
spoiler alert, it doesn't. There's always a negotiation process. But sometimes we can, um, you know, make the pre-sell. And that's what we're going for at this moment. We just want the pre-sell bonus. So here we go, and let's see how I did. So we see that there's now pinching happening in this area because of what we tried to do topologically. In fact, what we did is actually way too much. We gotta calm down on some of these areas that we just added in. So let's back off a little bit and see what we have. And really just think about how we wanna handle this because there's more than one way to get what we want. And just because one method gives us a little bit of problems, it doesn't mean we have to throw in a towel. In fact, I am willing to go through the negotiation process with this mesh, but also let's just start thinking like a, like a sub D. So we are going to just extrude this down. And from here, just begin adding loops to crease it and just make sure the auto smooth isn't on. These two are gonna to belong to this area, just being a source of tightening. And then let us try to bring these in. And it's just not liking that at all. So it's like, which one is it not liking? Is it that? Is it able to tolerate just two loops in the contingency without this? Let's see, something like that. But that just creates a star in this area but we still have our double junction. So that almost works. But now we are really making some risky moves in order to try to make this work. Like topology and subdivision is definitely one of those things that, like I said, I'm not very good at it. It's just um, one of those things that I've gotten a little better at over the years, but there's still a plethora of things that I wish that I could do, which is why I do spend so much time practicing. It's important to always be in a state of improvement or else, um, you know, I'll truly uh, become redundant. So we still have these red lines, but these red lines aren't what they used to be. So let's use a feature of hard ops that's hardly talked about and that is the um, shift click for the edge manager edge manager and we just want to turn she uh, seams into everything and then when we click it we see that you know basically everything should have been correct let's um, do that again oh you know what it's auto smooth auto smooth being off is what's killing us on that but we don't really need it for subdivision but that is what was uh, required in that context So really just bringing in this geometry, time to, trying to tighten it up without a whole lot of surface distortion happening, which is one of the banes of subdivision geometry. Like this particular issue, um, you know, I'm sure a user an hour is haunted by having their geometry be too sparse and them trying to add in details that are just, you know, the knife is just too, too dense for the bread. So let us grab this and extrude this inwards. And from here, we are just going to add another loop that will just force us the loop that we want to create. But we're also going to need to add an additional point in order to bring it all the way to the corner for its reinforcement. So something like that. And really, we're just kind of experimenting with what we're able to get in with this area. But more than likely, we are working on the final. And we're, you know, even though we applied multiple levels of sub D, we see that, you know, we still did not get exactly what we wanted because we should have applied even more levels of sub D. As crazy as it sounds, you know, sub D is like a, a, a beast. So... You know, all the people loving this content, you know, are sadists. They just, they just want to see the suffering, which 
there is so much suffering involved. You know, there's a lot of videos that didn't actually make it make the cut for this event. But I am hoping to you know, I, I did at least upload the winch one. The winch one, I, I'll probably do some revisits of that one in the future because I I feel there are some ways that it could probably have been done better, but let's just um, look at what we're getting geometrically and think about how we want to deal with that. And also we don't need auto smooth. I mean, I know I'm like kind of iffy on it today, but literally with subdivision, usually I have auto smooth uh, off for the most part. Not not saying that's the best way to work, just the way that I work. So what do we want to do here? Do we want to perform a reduction like so? Or do we want to go for what we created in that situation? So what we did there was basically bevel it like so, added loops on each side, brought them in, and you know, without subdivision showing in edit mode, it's always a surprise to see what the result looks like whenever I come out and you know, be honest, I love it that way. It's it's the the best way for me. Just I almost try to predict and assume what's what's going on based off of poles and their locations and all that sort of stuff. But that is the best we can do at getting that to merge in. So I, you know, that corner, I just can't live with it. I am going to save as, and we are going to jump this one file and then we are going to pop open the last time we saved and Phil realized that that is a regret and we're just gonna pop open our save where we jump over. And let's just think about this because you know I definitely aim for a level of perfection so let us take this into local mode and undo all of this and try to do it better. Merge this at last we can get in and just begin dissolving some of these points and we're just going to take it back to where it was but i was hoping that i saved it after i blocked it in so that way i could go back in time it's something i always do i always just time travel on files like i was um i recorded a video on moy that i did not publish because i wasn't entirely uh confident in the result but where i tried to make the uh, hose connector from yesterday using loft and stuff but We'll have to see. Definitely will probably make it at least a Patreon thing. They're supposed to be the ones that get all the B-sides. So let's go ahead and hide this. And just looking at it, I want to move it up just a little bit. You know, 40 minutes and we're only this far. I'm doing terrible, right? So, and it's partially because we're also having a discussion. So let's duplicate and hide just that piece that we restored back. I'm going to apply the mirror. And then we're going to apply a level of subdivision. So now this is our mesh. We're now making it a high poly mesh. But as a result of making our bread a little bit denser, we can get in here and just write the topology that we want to see. We can come out and see what our effect is and realize that we made terrible mistakes. Let's try that again. Maybe here. I feel like I'm making the exact same mistake. It happens. So control click from this edge to this edge. We're just going to bring this over. Just make it look a little bit straighter. And the thing about having all this extra geometry is we just have reinforcements just waiting, you know, for this Mongol army. Shout out to the Mongols. Even though I'm mowing y'all down by the uh, truckload in Ghost of Tsushima. So let us just grab this and we are going to P separate it. You know, thought I was about to press E, didn't you? And let's go back into edit mode with our boundary edge and extrude it down. 
and we'll just bring up an edge to meet and we'll also bring in an edge to meet this and let's just try subdividing it and we see that subdivision is a lot friendlier to us this time compared to last time when our geometry was too sparse so that's just proven the example I was talking about of you know when your geometry is just too small for the excuses that you try to give it you know that's why I call um, the subdivision solutions that users try to give it is excuses you're like but this but this and subdivision is like yeah, I don't care that's so that geometry is iffy and because it's iffy it has to go and also we see that there was a possible mistake made here so let us just apply and then we are going to go to level one and apply that too and I probably don't want that as my geometry though and that's because we extruded and did not follow up on it so now let's try that again so now we have something like this let's alt x bring it over to the other side and at least now we have this much that we're able to extrude inwards for creating the inside of a snack so i'm assuming helper is a male you know i assume helper won't get mad at me assuming his gender yeah, helper's a good boy also you know we have a helper so we're comrades let's um bring down another loop and once we add subdivision we see that we are in all right ish shape you know all right is in you know it's never perfect it's only perfect when we solve all of the loose ends that we made, which is what I'll look at in Gons as. So, I mean, to really be an effective modeler, you will need to be good at dealing with your loose ends and also hiding loose ends. You know, you can get all the way to the finish line of a concept piece without ever having to go through this whole geometric correction process. It really just depends on what your end goals are. Like maybe the next event should be around UVing and getting meshes to the finish line even with the most questionable of geometry because um, I feel that that's one of the other misconceptions that is a ponder that I see a lot of um, crosstalk on. So we're just gonna drag this up and just have some fun with our shape you know even though we're kind of making this chest a little little bird chest We're just working our way. And of course we want to face that from visible so we don't get any weirdness up top. Jump back to object mode. And now this is what we're looking at so far. So sometimes I get obsessed with certain areas because of their importance. Like for example, we know that this area is of high importance. And as far as the neck goes, I'm gonna assume that the neck is a third of the width of the head, maybe even thicker. So there is a chance that we might be having to go back and take both of these objects in sculpt mode and try to make some further modifications to them. In fact, I just want to make the following modifications to it even now, just because I already see it in advance. So let's go ahead and go back to object mode and we'll take this object in sculpt mode and this is just a testament to the greatness that is move brush now, except the moment I said that, it just started making a fool out of me. We'll ignore that. And we can look at it from other angles. And for some reason, I'm just not seeing enough geometry to grab. But after looking at edit mode, I realize that I'm just not reaching for the right areas. We also don't have auto smooth on. So we're doing all right. Even though we, you know, we broke all of our control systems, you know, we, we had a boxy shape, but you know, every now and then you have to get in and just make these sort of edits, even though it's on the fly and it's unwarranted and you're off, you know, or you could just go back to reconstructing. We could start unhiding some pieces and put it all back together again. But really 
just getting in here and making these quick corrections will do the job. We're keeping it loose. And then we could go back and make even more corrections later. And if it's completely egregious, we'll just go ahead and fix it. But continuing on, there's a tag here. So I'm going to just shift A, add a plane, RX90. Let's try it again, RX90, RX90. I guess I didn't have numpad, numlock on. And for this, what we want to do is jump to face, but align rotation to target, or actually project individual elements, so G, Y, control. But we do want to have control, so let us do that. Align rotation target, G, Y. And that's actually not bad. If we go in and we add a couple of loops, Whenever we press G and hold control, it'll actually snap on the surface, allowing us to just solidify and just throw a proxy name tag, which more likely we'll be having to modify later. So let's actually continue on with this. So looking at this side piece, you know, there's really just not a lot going on with the television images. So that's always good. That means we can keep it fairly boilerplate and then we can come back later and do like a more advanced version. So S shift, S shift and X to scale on everything but the X axis. And I'm not sure exactly what I'm seeing in the image. So I'm just making some stuff up, but this is our result. So, you know, almost looks like a ball of cheese. You know, subdivision has this distinct look to it. And I actually got driven crazy by it. I was like, I am not wanting all my work to have this subdivision look to it. You know, the look of subdivision, you just can't get away from it. Some people love it. I personally am like, uh, subdivision just has this look to it. <laughs> you know, machine was uh, talking about it with me on Twitter. It was like, you know, it'll never not look like melted plastic. I'm like, yeah, that look. But, you know, most people are nostalgic for subdivision, so I don't see as many complainers, but. Why did it look so strange? Let's shift in, make sure our normals are facing the correct way and you know, just looking at it, it just looks so lumpy. S, S, X, zero, just flatten it out. And that will suffice. So the next thing is we see that the arms are connected by, I guess, shadow. Over here, we see that the arms are also connected by shadow. So I'm going to interpret that shadow as so some sort of um, cylindrical union. So let us just bring in another 32 round, rounder pounder of who's your daddy and get a position. I'll select both these objects and we'll just use reset axis and press Y to reset the second object to the first object's Y axis. And I'm gonna go with something like that, you know, a little close to the edge. And really I feel that this piece is rounder, but also this has to be wide enough to accommodate the entire arm. So maybe something like this. We don't have to torture my, myself every day. So let's actually just place this in the middle. And keep in mind, you know, this thing's already been solved. So we're solving it on top of a solve, which is one of my favorite ways to work, to iteratively just union things together and work in that fashion because you know it's um it's a lot more straightforward as far as what you're about to get however merging 32 rounds into the shape it has opened up a box of some serious business so we got verdi verdi merge on and let's press alt x and merge to the other side we want a bisect mod split to this other side let's try that again
All right, so I think the gizmo orientation got off. So let's just uh, try that again. Sometimes it's easier to remove the mod and go from there, especially when you're trying to make a mod that's already set to do one thing into another thing. We could also mirror our work to this other side by, I guess, selecting two points that are the same. However, because of us already breaking our circle, that's going to be harder. So I'm just going to select this single point, press E, and then Y to get all the way to the center area. We can delete the point, shift S, origin to cursor. I guess in object mode, origin to cursor. And from here, we can just mirror split this on the other side of itself as well. Just minimizing our cleanup because no one's gonna care about what's on the interior of this cylinder. No one's gonna be looking at it unless we made this guy like explode. You know, he went meet me, meet me. Um, his catchphrase, signature catchphrase, uh, copyright, don't swim, all rights reserved. And let us control our add a loop and because this didn't make it, that tells me that there's a double. Tricky, tricky doubles. Also, let's go back to vertex snapping. You know me, when it comes to this, this subdivision business, vertex snapping is just such a great friend. Like your only friend. Same with Verdi Mergy. Verdi Mergy, in these uncertain times of exact, just being an absolute ninny sometimes. Yeah, you know, that's the only word I can use to describe it. Yeah, you know, I can use other other words that are less nice, but while I love exact, it is such a ninny. It's like, what's going on with you, man? <laughs> it, it needs to be patted on the shoulder, reminded of, of honor and legacy. Sorry, I've been playing too much um, Ghost of Tsushima. So I'm going to select this loop all the way to this side and the area that we're defining isn't so critical that we have to have it, you know, so all up on this area. So now we can actually bevel this and we see that the bevel just goes wild. And that's just a byproduct of the bevel, you know, being the way that it is with the edges, with the geometry we gave it, it also did not help it. So it's not even exclusively the fault of the bevel, it's just just one of those things users must be aware of. So if I place that loop there, I might be making a critical mistake. So sometimes I see that mistake in advance and I'm like, you know, I can, I'm gonna try to avoid that. However, I think we have a loop all the way down this that needs to just be terminated. Just control X and dissolve it. And now we have our connector area for the arms of this guy. You know, I cannot stress how destructive and one way this type of modeling is, which is why everybody's um, always talking about non-destructive, you know, almost as a uh, counter argument against us sometimes. They're like, you know, um, we're non-destructive unlike these guys. It's like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? That's all I can say. Just what are you talking about? Pop up my head. What are you talking about? Anyways, let's continue on. And we are just going to give this area loops. And with these loops, it'll have the integrity to go on. And it really doesn't have to be solidified. But it does need to be offset from the initial area. And it probably does need to be solidified. And we press R to get only the rim because we actually only need only the rim. So if we put subdivision all the way at the end, we can first apply this mirror because that mirror is a tricky mirror. This one is our mirror mirror where we mirror to the other side. We want to keep that one, but we do want to apply the sub the solidify. So that way we can select this edge and this edge and just bevel in a way that protects this area from subdivision shrinkage. 
you know, we could even tighten it if we want to really reinforce it, but now we are working our way down the arms. And so, meet me, you know, I could just hear this guy meet meeping at me now. Alright, so I'm back. Took a brief moment to get reacquainted. And let's just press Shift S. It's an upper cursor here. And we're just going to Shift A and bring in a cylinder, GZ minus one, in order to place our cylinder one blender unit below where we had it. And Shift S and origin to cursor. And we're now just going to scale this piece down. So also, by the way, this video should be like, I don't know, I consider every, every video I do where I start from a cube or nothing, a beginner video. So, you know, hopefully you guys are not getting lost, you know, that, that always um, makes me feel sad. It's like, oh, I failed. So just thinking about how we want to deal with this, maybe if we want to offset a series of loops and do this, which was our original plan because we have a perfect amount of loops for us to offset. According to the image, we actually only have two and I am over here dealing with three. So let's deselect one. And this is what I'm looking at in the image. You know, the image is just showing me that, you know, I see so much detail in that, that it'll blow your minds. Let us just fill this. And we also don't need a face for this other side. We'll also do the same thing. Just protect it, get rid of the interior faces and just put subdivision on it. And we see that, you know, there's a few areas that are gonna require some reinforcement like so. And that means that these areas will need to be sucked in a bit and also reinforced allowing us to set them smooth and then we too can mirror this over to the other side of this mesh and let us continue on so we see that we have just a little bit more arm a shorter version so let's just duplicate this and to be efficient on our origin let's just set our origin to here i don't like having my origin not be correct you know i'm just weird also with vertex snap we don't need a line rotation to target that's just not needed and let's just s z and scale it till we see kind of what we're looking at with the image something like that you know it's a it's a hard you know i venture to guess just kidding let's just start making uh venture bro puns like uh, originally i was going to be talking about how much i love the show and all that but this show's so old and the last season still hasn't come out so i'll spare you guys you know this is my bring it back I think they're actually about to make some movies of it which I didn't ask for Aqua Teen Hunger Force the movie was absolutely atrocious uh, absolutely atrocious um, my hope is to go through life never having to see it again so I'm going to select this one and we're just going to control click curve extract to extract it into its own mesh and let's just extrude this down and as you see the process of making this guy is just this is it we're just let's make sure our normals are facing the right way which can cause issues whenever it comes to sharpening and marking them control click curve extract and we'll extrude this off into its own piece and our modifiers are already pretty well set up for what we aim to do and bevels set up for what we aim to do. But if your normals aren't facing the right way, which is what's gonna happen when you're free extruding like me, you're gonna need to get in and select everything and press shift in and calculate those normals sometime because otherwise the, the Reaper will catch up to you as will the uh, Blue Oyster cult, the band, not the actual cult. That's a big fan of Blue Oysters. Anyways, looking at this, let us how are we going to make this shape guys i just don't no i'm kidding <laughs> but i just pretend to lose my composure in the middle of the video also these arms seem so long i mean his arms also seem rather long but i mean arms that reach down to your feet i don't know 
we're going to be going through some references and then making some adjustments. I mean, we could always uh, look at this version, you know, just to see, you know, that his hands actually become hands at some point. So which hands do we want to go for? Do we want to go for these blocky kind of vector man hands or these cooler claw hands? So let us just shift S cursor to geometry. Let's actually snap our cursor to this area. And I'm going to shift A, add a plane, F9, make the plane face us. And we're just going to bring it down, which we could just bring it right back up. It doesn't matter. We have absolute control. GG slide. We'll hold Alt in order to extend. And we're just going to model these just by hand, the classic way. Maybe something like that. And let's press SZ0 or SZ0 just to linearize that and make our days a little bit easier. And I'm going to press GZ and bring this down just because we're following a image of a cartoon. And let's SZ on this just to keep things a little bit sane. And let's set our origin according to the 3D cursor which means that I can press Alt X and send this to the other side. And it looks like one claws around another claw because of this black line. So what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to first select this edge, right click to put a point in the middle, and then we can press Q and use circle. And we see that loop tool circle doesn't work out very well. But if we shift click circle in the Q menu, we get another circle that also doesn't work. What's going on here? Shift click or uh, shift in. This should actually work. There we go. So then when we shift click, we're able to basically use the alternative circle. So there is a circle that's able to be used in these situations, but it isn't the default one. So if you shift click it, you should be able to use it. But if you don't have loop tools enabled, it should also be easy. So let's just separate this and we'll select this shape and solidify press 2 to push it both ways and there is a separation that happens where each side receives a different amount of thickness so I'm just gonna rip this P to separate and for one side we will just pull it in with solidify just think about how much we want to do and so this mesh right if we want to make it subdivision Let's subdivide it. What does it turn into? It turns into pudding. In fact, I was about to make a flashlight joke, but I'll spare you guys. But, you know, anything that looks like that, you know what you can do with it. Like, that's like a thing in the flashlight business. It's got a hole. You can talk to it. So, let us add a loop. To this side to reinforce it let's add a loop to this side to reinforce it because we want it to survive onto subdivision and because of our wish for it to survive that does give us a little bit of flexibility with how we're able to solve these areas so something like this you know it's a real hard decisions just have to be made I'm like do I want geometry progressing all the way around the shape you know that's probably going to be one of the things where I differ between most people on geometric viewpoints sometimes I will just start terminating and redirecting rather than just circumnavigate my form with something super silly so I just can't do it you know there, there's got to be a better way and there is it's termination terminate that loop with a triangle and you let the uh the quad nazis have their day with you you know they'll walk you out back and shoot you and your family but you know 
that's fine. So let us just slide this geometry around. You know, we're just talking about quad Nazis and subdivision solving. You know, nothing revolutionary. Let's also Alt X switch this to bisect a modifier and split it using a modifier so that way we don't have to uh, do too much manual mirroring. And let's come out of this mode. And another thing is I keep wanting to add wedges. Like I look at things and I'm like, man, I could just add a wedge. Just add a wedge and get away with it, you know? But will I get away with it? Also, am I about to redo this work? Spoiler alert. I do not redo my work. Uh, let's control M, press Y in order to flip it on the Y. Let's control S, apply scale, select everything, flip to normal. And basically all I did was flip the geometry around to the other side because I'm just really weird. I need my geometry to face the correct direction. Otherwise my head will explode. So let's continue on. Geometry to mesh. Delete this point, delete this point. Let's take these two edges to dissolve them. Select these two faces, hit it with the control B. I'll say, can you see? And we'll just get rid of these faces and grid fill. And let's just mirror it to the other side because working double is for chumps. And let's just get out. And this is what we're looking at. So with all of these pieces selected, I can select the body, press Alt X, press A, A again, and literally add a new modifier mirroring everything to the other side. So I just want to mirror to the other side, no questions asked. So looking at helper and just thinking about helper and what we are we aim for with helper, which is nothing. We're just making this model for fun because of the event at hand. I do see that we're probably going to need to make a few modifications. And these are those modifications. These are the helper files. So maybe something like that is a little bit more reasonable. Let's press uh, five and look at it in perspective. And I'm still gonna have to come in and adjust this chest to be a little bit less aggressive. And also usually after I apply a level of subdivision, I always come back and just kind of get rid of some extra loops. But in this case, we may want to get rid of some loops for the purposes of simplification just so we can get in and simplify things without a whole lot of effort. But at this time, if we do that, we start losing some of the curvature that's happening with it and it's just not worth it. So looking at the body, <laughs> the body is just so simple. We should just go ahead and just send this to the next level and wrap this model, just goofing off here. Just playing with subdivision, let subdivision waste our time. We could even get shapely with it where you know we place a loop in the middle we bring it in so it has the same profile on the interior but different than it does on the uh, other part i mean it's just shading to me it's just cg shading or uh cell shading or however this, this uh, show is made so let's just control a let's undo that we don't want to ever apply two levels of sub d that's just too much I'd rather work each level one by one like a Z brusher. And we're just gonna grab these loops, control B to protect it, Alt X to mirror it upwards. And once we add subdivision, there is a degree of shrinkage that happens with it. So let's just select everything and just Alt S, push it out. Alt S, push it back in. You know, got a little bit out of control there. And we're doing pretty good so far. So. Let's hit smooth and take a look at what we have so far. So just in our viewport, if we wanted to open the mouth, all we have to do is just parent it to this round piece. And then whenever we rotate this, we can be like, meh, 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 meh. But for us to truly be able to open the mouth, we probably have to deal with the interior of the mouth by either cutting it out or removing it. So. Let's try that, just being random with it. And we'll press V to remove it, control L, rip that off. And let's see how that fares. 
That reminds me of every time he opened his mouth. So one, two, three, merge at last. One, two, three, at last. And let's just extrude this stuff over, add a loop, F and F. We'll give this an extra loop. Press E, F in order to flip it. And we can dissolve and get rid of that whole flow because we're gonna need a flow that's actually going all the way across it like so. In order for this to work out, you know, we either go hard or we go back home. And if you're at home, then you, you need to go get hard hard ops. It's on sale right now, or at least at the time of the recording. If it isn't, you know, don't, don't write me about it. I won't respond. I just give up now. So I'm going to fill this with a generic face, and then I'm going to select all of it, because if we don't have an interior inset protecting this then it's just not going to flow right so something like this is a little bit more suitable and from here we have to really think about how we want to solve this i mean geometric perfection if that's your thing in life if that's what you um enjoy have at it but when it comes to me just all about surviving so i will just redirect reduce you know start hitting it with all those old polygon hacks just to uh make it to the end of the day where hopefully i'm not being told to empty out my desk so let's grab these two pieces Control x and begin just reworking some of this geometry you know we could probably negotiate just a little bit better of a result at least for this uh, crucial area then we're getting, you know, maybe something like that because what we're looking at previously was just a little bit too free. But with something like this, we can definitely make this work out. So the next thing is let's uh, subdivide and add a loop in the middle. And we will just perform a junction there and just seal this off. And so for this one, we have to think about what type of flow that we're truly carrying here because we have like a flow that's countering it. So I'm going to press K and we're going to just finish reinforcing this area. You know, sometimes geometry seriously will blind you if you let it. So it's important to keep your eye on the prize and remember what, what it is that you're going for with it or else you know you'll start seeing all these possibilities and none of them will be the result that you're after alt v let's look at the wireframe and could be worse however let's um, begin doing some reductions and we can offset this one here we can offset here if we're really just trying to go for that all quad formation we can get something like that going on and let's come out and realize that we are not even dealing with an area that's going to be seen you know that that's how crazy it gets you know it's so easy to just start losing time and always make sure that your subdivision modifier is last or else your optimal display will be interfered with which will make your mesh look denser than it actually is you want your mesh to be smooth and show the efficiency of your solution instead of showing you like the true result of the sub d mesh which is you too much geo you know that's the problem that was applied it would just be so much geo but let's look at where we are with our model so far. All right, so let's get a move on for there is no time to waste. And we've wasted quite a bit of time just, just having fun with this model. You know, usually I'm always in such a big rush, but I'm really trying to relax so that way we can talk about more interesting techniques. So this area is literally this piece without the curve. 
and if we bring it down and we scale it up maybe rotate it 180 degrees and bring it up to meet this area we find ourselves not having to actually model that a second time and I'll bring back up my folder of helper images and we'll just bring in this image that really shows okay so this one shows us that we got to revisit the mouth and all of our obsession in this area is nonsense you know that that's what happens sometimes you get stuck in some topological nonsense and then you look at an image and the image just says hey <laughs> the hell are you doing the hell are you doing so let's just press F and I'm gonna press Control B to bevel and round this And I'm going to actually dissolve this loop, use box cutter, and redraw this loop. And let's also give this a loop on the inside, reinforcing it, which is where we were going wrong before as well. We might as well start correcting some of our previous transgressions and just really looking at that just questioning it you know don't want to really mess up any of these flows you know usually if i start shifting things over i'll add a loop to just kind of keep things on track but also we have a bunch of garbage inside of this so just looking at this we are going to attempt to just fill this manually something like that and just GG slide it down and of course we want to make sure subdivision is the last one on the stack or else we will look silly when we look at our model press E F we'll bring this one press E make it even and now it's creased up enough and if we grab this piece and rotate it on the X axis our X we just want to make sure we have that same filling whenever we open our mouth, even though in that picture, his mouth is open like that. It's like way crazy. So we will have to deal with that when we get to that, if we ever had this guy speaking. So also let's look at how many segments, one, two, three, four. How many do I have? One, two, three, four. Also these are fatter. You know, sometimes it's good to just take moments to just ponder. So here we see array not sitting perfectly on top of each other. And that's because that is exclusive to relative offset. You know, if you set relative offset to one, you can have things just sit on top of each other. But constant will use a different system for that. So instead of getting into that all deep, that's the uh, short and skinny of it. Let's also set our origin to this area. So we can just scale this out. And I'm gonna press Q, O, T, and then add a cylinder, and then control scroll to place it where we want it. Press E to equalize it, and then we can press A to adjust it, and then when we click to apply, I can press S and Z, and scale it precisely to how much I need. So Q, O, T is just a work of art. And it takes, it takes so much, you know, the, the, the true magic of these tools is, you know, like probably um, a percentage is my suggestions and requests and the other half is uh, user requests. And then finally, it's the um, person who created it actually, you know, adding their own flair to it. So sometimes it pays off. Sometimes I design a task in a rather linear fashion, but, you know, nowadays I actually count on everyone's uniqueness to shine through on a task to either make it more than what I envisioned it to be or um, you know behaviorally perfect which is also um, preferable like for example 2d dice um, 
the original request was for it to use the knife system, but if we would have done that, it would have been so much more limited. And as a result, a new dice has been unlocked that's yet to be fully unleashed to you guys, but over time, it will definitely become a lot more apparent as we um, continue on with dice. Like right now, we're dealing with view dice and everyone's making all these requests of it, but view dice is literally view dice it has to dice according to view like what you're asking for is free dice and i know we need it at the time i was like man people are really going to ask for free dice but we got you so with this piece i was about to make a different piece and then i realized that there's a piece that we haven't dealt with yet which is just this one and i mean with all these basic parts it's so easy to convert it to the subdivision process so Let's control A and let's just grab these two faces, I to extrude, I mean I to inset, and you know, grid fill. You know, when I'm listening to music, I just roll it back and forth in the F9 like a weirdo. I just hold control, roll the wheel, like I'm a DJ. I'm like mixing records on this thing, just rolling it. But anyways, just, just gotta have some fun when you're doing 3D, right? You know, like if my supervisor, first of all, existed, it wasn't me, but it was like looking over my desk, you'd see that I'm like a goofball, just goofing around, goofing with the models. I mean, not, not, um, not going to, um, do anything to humiliate the model or, um, you know, dishonor the client, but, you know, like I'll move the view around, I'll, um, I'll do a bunch of stuff, undo, paste the version that I undid in the same scene as what I undid to and just start working from two different time zones. I mean, you got to use all these tools that you have at your disposal. And, you know, not every oddity is a, is a bug. Sometimes a oddity is, is something great. Like, for example, you know, Booleans can cut in topology you know, usually people just use bullets to cut in shapes, but you can also cut in topology. You can cut in material colors with bullets. You can cut in UV data with, with bullets. But there's so much you can cut in with bullets that is not talked about because a practical use just hasn't been explored. And, you know, if they remove that stuff, I would be so mad. I'd be like, hey, <laughs> I was in the middle of trying to figure that out, figure out a use for it. I mean, there are definitely some uses for cutting in topology especially if you're trying to uh, just make things a little more fluid, you know, working smart. Some people are into working smart. Me, I'm, I'm into um, experiencing problems now. Not, not saying I'm looking for a fight, but um, I definitely spend a lot of time experiencing the issues that I feel that users are running into and trying to experience them before you guys do in hopes that Either we can clean them up or mitigate them or something or have an answer for them before it actually comes up as a topic of discussion. But most things, if it's out of scope, it's out of scope. Can't be increasing our scope forever. This tool will someday be at the point where it'll be unable to be enabled if we kept up at that rate. So it's important that we uh, maintain a scope. So I'm going to select this point and shift s origin to selection s and z and how, just how big is this piece it's about as big as the upper body but this thing is still way too big so let's make it a little thinner and bring this up to meet like so and this guy is walking on some chair legs. So let's, I should have replaced that image. I actually like that image, but this is what, what he's standing on. So we got our work cut out for ourselves, don't we? <laughs> also, I don't know how accurate this image is. This image doesn't look like it was made by someone on the show. You know, I also got an image of an action figure you know, in case we need like something more accurate. So, I mean, I just see a standard office chair base. So not saying I'm an expert at modeling office chair stuff. I don't think I've modeled hardly any office chair stuff. So this is my first attempt at such a thing, but let's GZ minus one. 
uh, shift S origin to cursor just so we have it correct. We are going to grab the base and scale it out. And I can already tell you this is about to be some some business. Like we're we're gonna be dealing with some um, some serial serial business. You know, office chairs are probably deceptive. They're like way harder than they probably look, which is why they sell for so much. Let's uh, use B, but also press W to exit box cutter. We don't need it at this time. That's the important thing about box cutter is when you're not using it, exit it. It's an active tool. What are you sitting in an active tool for? You wouldn't sit in bevel all day. Don't sit in box cutter all day, unless you're using box cutter all day. I mean, I'm part of that box cutter all day gang, but you know, sometimes you don't need it. You truly do not, which is just hard to say, but you know, you're, you're dealing with some subdivision stuff and you're trying to make selections in edit mode. No, you don't need it active. You need it active when you're cutting a shape or drawing a shape. So I'm assuming that there are some round pieces happening here. So I am going to shift A, add a cube and use sphere cast just so it's not too easy. Just, just a little easy, but not, not very easy. And something like that will have to suffice. I mean, I just don't know what's going on in this image, you guys. So let's perform a union and geometry to mesh. And this is what we're looking at. So I'm going to take this in local mode and we're going to solve it before we actually merge it with the other piece, which is unusual, right? Why would you union these things together, set up all these booleans and then solve it and then take it back into a boolean? Well, I mean, to make our boolean lives easier, of course. So we can all text mirror this to the other side. We probably should have tapered it inwards, which I will forever regret now, but let's come out of local mode and let's go back to when that was happening. And I have a second chance because we didn't do it within X amount of undo strokes. So sometimes life be like that, but lately I've been testing out my undo strokes and I'll be pounding it hard, you guys. So. Let's um, draw another shape, hit it from the side. Let's um, alt X, bisect mod, split that because we're not gonna talk about it twice. We're talking about it once. So I can get out of here and eat some chicken, maybe. But, you know, I've been talking about Ghost of Tsushima, but I have now been driven crazy by the game and I think I've seen enough. <laughs> like I, I just beat the DLC. And so I think now I'm done. I mean, I still got to finish liberating the island, but you know, they'll be fine. Just kidding. They won't be fine. They need my assistance with liberation. So <laughs> they, they call me uh, Liberace. That's how much liberating I'll be doing. Be liberating everybody. So. It's strange that I took that road, isn't it? Let's subdivide. And we will not go that road where we just basically try it out. So early for us to try it out like that. So we will do something a little nicer. And I feel like on these chairs, there's like a piece that's like cut out exposing the wheel. So I, I can't see what's going on in that blurry image. So we're just gonna make make something up. I mean, within reason, of course. Not gonna go full full box cutter tech sci-fi, but you know, maybe something like that just to expose a will, which means we have to make a will. Ugh. Let's press I, B, and just such a ugly situation, but you know, we'll just slide a little geo around and it's fine. Roll some loops in. Okay. 
just had a uh, brief moment of reflection while I solve some geometry. That's how it happens. You find your brief moments of serendipity throughout the day. Just surviving a little sub D. Let's, speaking of surviving sub D, let's look at what surviving sub D looks like. And it doesn't look very good. Just kidding. Let's go back into edit mode. And we definitely want to reinforce this area so it's just not going uh, awry. It, previously it was just running wild. But this is what we're currently looking at whenever it comes to our subdivision. So we can actually dissolve this loop, which will make this just a little bit more rounded. Sometimes I am really hard on the loop overriding, which can work against me. Like I said, the solutions that I show with topology are not like uh, the best solutions. They're just a solution. Um, you know, 10 years later, I'll probably have different solutions I'll use because I'll have had another blood sport Kumite with subdivision and lost. And, you know, as subdivisions, you know, killing my brother Luke and saying, you know, my soul is his, I'll have another epiphany. So, we're just going to close that up just because we're not barbarians, unlike the Mongols that invaded Iki Island. Those dang Mongolians. So, continuing on. And just thinking about how we want to deal with this. You know, really, I want to merge this at last. I want to press K. Walk around this corner. And begin talking to this geometry. However, we want to continue creeping around it. So, how do we want to do this? We could slide it up, merge, turn it into a quad like so and just wrap it you know sometimes you'll look at some topology and it'll puzzle you and the solution is literally so basic you just gotta take a brief moment pull back anyways we are over obsessing let us remove subdivision and we are going to union this together and before we actually apply the modifiers let us just put a couple of loops of protection. Let us bevel this in advance because applying a boolean isn't going to change what our subdivision solution is going to be. But we do need to um, we do need to do these things in the right order, though. You know, can't be getting too crazy. But something like that, you know, then we bevel it with a uh, loop of protection, then one more loop just to prevent any weirdness from getting to our loop of protection. Same with this area, you know. Like, I, my topology is like on some Naruto rolls, you guys. So, like I said, don't, don't follow me. Uh, my way of the ninja is not the right way. Let's press I. And something like that. And that's completely unnecessary to do. I just cannot stress that enough. Like all this solving, it doesn't matter. Like solving up top, I shouldn't even be doing it. I'm just, I am too much, you guys. I can spot my mistakes in the middle of my videos. Like I'm like, why am I doing this, you guys? I'm a hack. So let us press X and mirror this. And we will just forget the demonic bad thoughts that tell me I'm not good enough just kidding but we're going to add a loop and connect here and you think I would want to add another loop to just give that a um, proper ending but instead we are going to go for something like that and let us form a connection in this area Let us press K and we'll just begin working a flow upstairs. 
even though it may not even be the best idea I feel like we have a loop over situation happening but let's put subdivision on it and turn on smooth and make sure auto smooth isn't on and get out of wireframe just so we can look at what we're getting with this particular piece because like I said it's way so it's way easy for me to just get like obsessed with a very insignificant area of geometry and some rules are just not going to be renegotiable in this so let's um really think about this so we can now narrow it down to one try and one weird quad and a strange area which we can also remove but we actually need this loop because it's proper support for the top we can actually give it another loop because it's just such a serious situation where it'll come out like that but at some point this loop didn't actually need to exist you know because it needed to actually merge and be part of a junction so this is part of a uh, topological obsession you know by now you guys should have like 10 hours of videos where i have literally um, got too obsessed with geometry in multiple examples where it I got obsessed and it did not actually pay off you know talking about the artist not not to make an AI of me that would be terrible I would hate to see an AI made of me unless you terminate the real me to merge me into the machine then then we're talking you know then that's immortality maybe it might just be termination I might just incinerate inside of a machine but we're on some Philip K tech here getting off topic talking about some Twilight Zone <laughs> business so modeling our chair leg getting over obsessed turning off subdivision and dang edit mode you know gotta get that out of here Let's slide this in to me. And we'll do the same thing here. And just looking at what our connections look like. And this guy has four legs. You know, I don't know why I'm uh, taking my sweet time with modeling things and savoring topological studies. But, you know, I talked about how this area was unimportant. And that's why I have to go back and delete it because just out of habit I just go in and just grid fill places that I just don't have to deal with but for this to be four we're going to need to just rip this off cut it away and then we can just go into radial array bring it down to four and jackpot so four is just a lucky number when it comes to what we're dealing with but we do want to put our subdivision down at the end so then everything merges up nicely and let us take this moment to apply the mirror, remove the displace, apply the array, apply the weld, and then we can just select this, grid fill, and now we're actually filling it for good. Uh, so shift R. And this is now the leg. So we're almost to the end of this thing, just building helper using subdivision geometry. Just having a little fun with it you know we could have just rushed our way also i feel like this uh waste is is canon so when it comes to subdivision editing it's the pits but you know me i'll make it look easy let's press b bring all this down just that much and we can bring this down just to match the top of this. We'll add another loop. Add another loop to reinforce it. One in the middle just to be formal. While we ask for this dance. And now we are looking at our helper bot. So when it comes to the arms. The arms have also received some notes via this particular image. If we look at where the middle terminates it appears to happened in the middle of this this piece and this piece the arms seem to match up I would say that this is a little bit shorter you know with all these models it's always an optometrist test with me 
of just trying to get the proportions right and just learning a little bit more about proportions just every time I attempt it, unless it's a car. A car, I don't learn anything. It's just terrible every time. So from here, let us just go to this area and I could make another cylinder, but you know, this arm piece was pretty good. Let's just shift D duplicate it. And I'm going to remove the second mirror and we can go to reset axis and just reset it on the X, just if we want to reset it on the X alone. And let us press Alt X and we're just going to mirror from the Y below. So that way we have it. And I think I also want to take this part and let's just snap our cursor here. Grab this, set our pivot point to 3D cursor, S, and what axis do we want to exclude? X, S, Shift, and X, S, Shift, X. So now we have something like that going on. And we can just bring this out to basically widen our will. And if we wanted to make it rounder, you guessed it. We're just renegotiating our subdivision leases so we get something a little bit more round and so from here if we want to radial array it, we're gonna have to make some hard decisions for example I'm gonna to need to apply the mirror because we're gonna be changing our origin I want to rotate this around this so if we shift click it it will give the origin of the first object to the second one allowing me to easily radial array this object so you know when it, when hops is brought into the mix it's all about shaving off massive things that would take an inordinate amount of time. You know, if you want a radial array, I guess at this point now, you would um, build a radial array modifier using geometry nodes. You know, not saying that's the official way, but Blender needs to uh, put some pre, look, I just did an ism. You know, that's one of those things I do where I just, I see an area, I'm like, yeah, I'm just add an extra add an extra extra to it just got an extra don't be doing that you know I've worked some jobs where people noticed it they're like hey I see you doing that stop doing that like I just did it again it's just so easy to do it so just like that we have now modeled helper using subdivision so I hope users enjoyed this video we're just going in just adding some former loop formal loops you know just can't help ourselves but with that we can now look at ourselves in shaded view and just admire our handiwork